Through any disaster, emergency, or even survival situation, tools will serve a very important function. As my dad always told me, the right tool is 80% of the job. After a major disaster, whether natural or man-made, having these items that can serve specific functions will come in handy. While I have collected a lot of tools over the years, for this video I've tried to condense them down to options that can serve multiple purposes, will give you the most bang for your buck, and are easily transportable. But did I succeed in my selection of items? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So let's jump in to cover five essential tool categories. Download the Start Preparing Survival Guide to help you prepare for any disaster. I'll post a link in the description and comment section below or visit cityprepping.com forward slash get started for a free guide to help you get started on your journey of preparedness. Before we get into specific tools, let's first discuss safety. Make sure you have a good pair of safety glasses. A simple splinter to the eye or some other type of eye injury during normal times, it can be treatable. But when the hospitals are at capacity after a disaster, they'll have to triage injuries and you may not be able to get help. Also a note about multi-tools. While I'd recommend carrying one of these in your EDC, I don't really cover this tool in this video as I want to get into more specific tools that would work much better. Now having said that, let's cover the main categories. If you're interested in picking up any of these items, I'll post links in the description section below. One of the most important things you should consider when preparing the tools you'll need to have in your home is a bag where you'll store them. Using a roll-up tool offers a lot of advantages. They're light, they're easy to organize your tools, and you can carry them like a toolbox and spread them open for easy access. But if you already have a toolbox, hey, roll with it. There's a few basic tools to start off with that serve a multitude of purposes that are not stored in any particular pocket. Axe or hatchet. These serve multiple purposes apart from just processing wood. The bat can be used as a basic hammer, and you can process game and they can be used for self-defense. Mini crowbar or prying bar. Need to access a structure after an earthquake or tear things apart? You'll be glad you had this. Okay, let's look in the first pouch of what I consider basic tools. Adjustable wrench and channel locks. Need to loosen or tighten bolts of various sizes or just need to grab onto a pipe? A universal socket and socket wrench sure beat having to carry a complete set of sockets to tighten and loosen bolts. Needle nose pliers, vice grips, and regular pliers allow you to grab, hold onto, and manipulate things. Multi-bit screwdriver allows for general construction and deconstruction. You may also want to consider a mini ratchet screwdriver, which gives you more torque and more options. Allen keys and star wrenches allow for loosing and tightening. Silcock keys allow you to open water spigots on most commercial buildings. The pounding category covers the blunt force tools that you'll need for various applications. I went with a ball peen hammer as opposed to a claw hammer because, well, it just wouldn't fit my bag. If I need the claw to pull out different nails, I can use a crowbar. With a ball peen hammer, their head is stronger than the usual claw hammer. You can use them for shaping softer or heated metals to make other tools like spear points, hooks, and knives. I also keep my leather gloves in the same pouch. These gloves are great at protecting your hands, which is critical when you do any work, which involves cutting, hammering, slicing, and so on. Having necessary hand protection ensures that you prevent injuries, which could easily worsen. This category includes the tools used to separate, slice, fillet, saw, or cut materials apart. Aside from a survival or a wilderness knife, you should also have other types of cutting devices for different uses, like for medical purposes, precision cutting, and dressing animals. A survival or wilderness knife is essential. You can use it to cut and carve wood for stakes, shelters, traps, spears, make a fire in the wild, process animals for eating, and of course, self-defense. I also keep a sharpening device to ensure my blades stay sharp. For slicing, X-Actos are small, affordable, and practical. They're great for precision cutting and in a pinch could be used for medical purposes. For heavy duty cutting of thicker materials, I went with aviation snips. Next is a small hacksaw. This tool is suitable for cutting metal, wood, and plastic. Just be sure to have the right blades based on what you're cutting. A wire cutter for cutting and stripping wires will also come in handy. This category includes the tools used to secure items together. Sometimes things break or we just need to make sure that they don't separate. This is where these really come in handy. The first tool that you'll need under this category is a sewing kit with an assortment of needles and threads. Whether sewing a structure for shelter or stitching clothing or tying a suture, Needles are the smallest item in your toolkit with perhaps the most significant utility. Also includes several feet of fishing line, which takes up very little space and has more utility than just for fishing. 
Zip ties are another essential tying tool, which are strong, small, and have a variety of uses. You can use zip ties to build shelters, organize items to save space, and just overall bind things together. Duct tape is another must-have survival tool in your kit. It's small in size, making it easier to store, but it has hundreds of uses. You should also have several carabiners in your toolkit for tying and connecting. Just make sure you get the ones that are solid and sturdy. 16 gauge coil mechanics wire can be used for heavier applications. It's sturdier and stronger than the previous items listed for tying and will fasten more solidly. You should also consider carrying a small amount of nails and nuts and bolts to secure things together if needed. JB Weld is a must have to ensure two things stick together and bungee cords for those times when you have to strap all items together. The miscellaneous essential category contains the tools that we don't necessarily think of but are critical to have inside our survival toolkit. A basic headlamp allows you to focus on the task while keeping your hands free. A small wood saw can help process items quickly. A C-clamp can hold items together that you may be working on. Teflon plumber tape makes sure that you don't have to deal with leaks. WD-40 helps lubricate and loosen stubborn nuts and bolts. Multimeters allow you to quickly understand what you're working with when dealing with electrical issues. I originally was going to include 550 paracord, but I was on the fence about carrying around a bunch of cordage. Instead, I tossed in a small amount by adding this paracord bracelet. If you think I should opt for 100 feet instead, just let me know in the comments section. Many of the tools that we already have in our home for fixing and installing things can also be used to help us survive during a collapse. The kind of tools that you'll need to have will depend significantly on the environment that you're living in and the crisis that you're facing. From the bag to the type of use, that's hacking and pounding, slicing and separating, or tying and connecting, tools are an essential survival item. Make sure that you pay up for the high quality tools that will last and understand their uses. I also think of the saying before making purchases, buy once, cry once. Also be sure to check out my other video entitled 15 low cost survival items. That video also details some great tools to have on hand for other applications. As always, stay safe out there.